Murdoch's Music Minute, the obscure, soft-spoken channel for rock, pop, and indie album reviews, discography rankings, and all that jazz with a thick accent. I'd like to dedicate today's video to the charming and one and only Nick and Lex. Check out the channel if you like um, very in-depth and fun uh, reactions to proc rock, jazz, but also uh, all kinds of other music. He won't, however, because today's album review includes substance abuse and mental health issues. I'd like to talk about Nick Drake's Brighter Later album today, which means we are moving forward into yet again singer-songwriter territory. Nick Drake is a sort of cult star um, these days, however, he was um, absolutely unknown and completely without success during his lifetime. He was a shy person, very introvert, and unfortunately also not only struggled with depression, but also um, drug abuse, and died at the very way too tender age of 26. He is best known for his melancholic, um, very soft, sometimes whimsical, but sometimes also very shattering and crushing songs. He used very often unusual tunings on his acoustic guitar, did masterful finger picking, but was also very reluctant and insecure as a performer. Famous folk rock producer Joe Boyd supported the young Nick Drake. Still, uh, initially his albums were hardly bought. He died more or less a complete unknown artist. This changed in the late 90s with, an, with a TV commercial using the title track of his third album, Pink Moon. And all of a sudden, everybody became a Nick Drake fan who was mildly interested in um, the more intellectual, um, deeper music uh, from the last decades. Today, Nick Drake is a much beloved and celebrated folk artist in his own right. So before I take a closer look at his second album, let's learn more about Nick Drake's rather short and sad career. Nick Drake was actually born in Rangoon, Burma, but uh, very soon moved back with his family to England and he grew up in the English countryside. His parents both were quite musical and his mother even recorded a few of her own songs in a home environment. Drake early on was interested in music and uh, learned to play uh, several instruments. He was an intelligent young man with a possible university career in front of him, but even at a very young age became a shy and reclusive person. Apparently he had trouble connecting to other people of his age and as a young student also began smoking huge amounts of cannabis and uh, also later took hallucinogenic drugs. He also early on was prone to phases of depression that unfortunately uh, became worse in the following years. This of course uh, bears the question again whether the drugs brought on the depression or the depression or rather a disposition for depression was the reason Drake took so many drugs maybe as a means to fight those depressions. Instead of studying he turned more and more to music and writing music. Um, he also performed and uh, finally was discovered by producer Joe Boyd or rather introduced to Joe Boyd um, who was really enthusiastic about Drake's songs. This led to Nick Drake's first album, Five Leaves Left, produced by Boyd and um, released in 1969. 
It was a very organic, dry-sounding singer-songwriter album, but also featured some almost dramatic and beautifully orchestrated tracks, like Riverman, which showed both Nick Drake's poetic and also melancholic nature. The album met with mixed reviews, it didn't sell very well, and left Nick Drake insecure and disappointed. For his next album, Joe Boyd convinced the artist to use more instrumentation and arrangements. The result would be Brighter Later, recorded in 1970 and released in 1971. Nick Drake's second album, Brighter Later, produced in 1970. It is his the second of his three albums released during his lifetime. Posthumously, um, there were a few compilations and um, a collection of unreleased material. But basically, um, his whole discography consists of three albums. Um, Brighter Later is sandwiched in between the folky debut, uh, which contains a lot of classic Nick Drake tunes, and the stark cult album Pink Moon. It's a difficult position in his discography because this makes it easy to somehow overlook or look down on the second album, most of all uh, because it is the musically uh, most produced album in his discography, it features a lot of orchestration, a full band sound, um, saxophone. It's very soft, almost easy listening inspired. And for many fans, that makes it a little bit unauthentic or a sort of watered down Nick Drake. It is his most produced and pop oriented album. And maybe the only album that at least musically sounds a little bit more upbeat. You can easily listen to this during a soft summer night while sipping cocktails or drinking red wine with um, your best friends. This is not a thing you could say about most of Nick Drake's music. In fact, usually I'd argue that Nick Drake's music is very autumnal, uh, which also is the reason why his debut album made it to my list of Murdoch's autumn albums. Not this one, Brighter Later, a short and very sweet album, which nonetheless, lyrically, is still typical Nick Drake, because it is maybe a little bit sugar-coated, but at the end of the day, it is a very melancholic and sad album. The cover already shows us what to expect, maybe musically, um, at least to me, uh, this is a very apt depiction of what Nick Drake probably was like as a person. We see a young man who's pretty shy very introvert. Um, he actually looks a bit sullen on this picture. Uh, you hardly see his face. There's a lot of shadow on his face. Uh, at the same time, there's a certain calmness, but also loneliness about this. But uh, I don't want to uh, overanalyze um, the cover picture. However, um, still, I think this is, this is a beautiful um, cover sleeve. The album starts off with a piece simply called Introduction, and this is a very lush, almost easy listening orchestral instrumental. Um, it's unlike anything uh, you will hear on, on any other Nick Drake album. Apparently, Drake wanted to go for a kind of Beach Boys Pet Sounds vibe with those instrumentals on this album. Maybe it was also more the work and suggestion of producer Joe Boyd, who already uh, for Nick Drake's debut album actually had a more richer, more full band sound in mind. 
So uh, after the debut album, unfortunately, commercially, uh, was quite a flop. Uh, Drake agreed to um, have um, more of a full band sound and more um, production value uh, for this second album. The first real song in, on Brighter Later is called Hazy Jane Part 2, for no apparent reason. It's the most up-tempo track you will find in uh, Nick Drake's discography. Uh, it has electric guitars, um, brass. Uh, Richard Thompson plays lead guitar on, on this one. Um, and overall, it's it's a soft rock track, um, and unlike anything really uh, I've ever heard by Nick Drake. This is followed by At the Chime of a City Clock, uh, a bit of a, a late classic by Drake. Uh, nowadays, at least, it's it's considered one of his classic tracks. It's a very evocative, uh, beautiful number. Uh, again, we have um, a kind of a kind of cocktail lounge saxophone solo in this one. Um, Mike Kowalski, who also played for the Beach Boys, is on the drums. Um, in general, it's, it's a very interesting combination of musicians, session musicians, uh, on this album. And at the chime of a city clock, put up your road clock. At the chime of a city clock is an interesting song looking at life in the big city, probably London, but from a certain distance uh, or a distant viewpoint. Um, the big city is attractive and luring you in, but at the same time it is intimidating and very exhausting. There's a longing for the big city and at the same time a certain longing for anonymity and peace and calm in this track. Um, it is followed by track number four, One of These Things First. Uh, this is one of the catchiest tracks uh, on the entire album. What sticks out to me is um, the use of piano on this one. It's a beautiful, pensive song um, about um, sort of missed opportunities or um, the thought experiment, what could have been. Lyrically, the song might seem simple and very repetitive in its structure, but um, this makes it easy to follow and actually uh, also follow the thought process behind uh, the lyrics and maybe um, start off a thought process of your own missed opportunities in life. Next up is Hazy Jane number one. This is a um, more subdued, folky singer-songwriter tune. It's dominated by string accompaniment and Nick Drake's wonderful, very clean, um, picked acoustic guitar. The lyrics, like very often in Nick Drake's work, are a bit vague or oblique. Um, to me, the song is about feeling lost. Um, it, it's about a person who is somehow lost living a lie, as it's also mentioned in the um, in the lyrics, uh, maybe um, a girl who's um, yeah lost, maybe also in, in, in drug abuse um, and not realizing what's happening around her. Apparently she's happy, but she doesn't uh, she doesn't realize um, that uh, she's actually lost. Um, that's what the song is about to me. Um, it is very sad and again at the same time perfectly beautiful. Um, Hazy Jane number one is a song I fell in love with from the very first time I, I heard it. It was also one of the very first Nick Drake tunes I've ever heard on uh, a compilation CD. Um, 
this is this is perfection if you um if you want to know what nick drake's about and if you want to get this feeling of coziness and at the same time melancholia and um, a sort of depressed beauty if that makes any sense to you um then listen to hazy jane number one it's one of the absolute highlights for me on this album and this one closes the a side Side two starts with one of the cutest um, pieces um, ever recorded by Nick Drake, and that's another instrumental, but this time a bit longer and more fully composed. Uh, the beautiful Brighter Later. The next track is Fly, also one of the more folk inspired songs on brighter later and um, it is another of those bittersweet tunes uh, only nick drake could compose in that way and um, it's another absolute jam please give me second grace incredibly beautiful incredibly melancholic um it has, has a gorgeous seemingly simple melody but um, there's a lot of depth to this track for me. Um, yeah. Fly is a song that seems to be about um, asking for forgiveness. Uh, it's about remorse, um, asking for second chances. Um, the instrumentation is very intimate. You basically have only uh, acoustic guitar, a bit of... Um, string or viola and a very very subdued bass guitar wonderful song um the following track poor boy um is one of the better known tracks of this album um it is a bit of a curiosity in the sense that this one features heavy uh, background vocals and um, those background vocals almost landed a certain a soulfulness um, um as an r and b a soul vibe um other than that, the song also has this easy listening jazz influence that dominates the entire album um, the saxophone again is very prominent on this one yeah it's it's a very it's a if you can use this word with Nick Drake. It's a fun song. Uh, not my favorite, to be honest, even though it is very memorable and uh, very catchy. Things become more serious again with uh, the following Northern Sky. I think this one also, um, in the meantime, has been used in um, in several movies or, or TV series. Um, it is um, a true Nick Drake classic. Again, here we uh, see the artist as being a man on the verge of depression, or at least not a stranger to melancholia and depression. Um, what more beautiful picture can you use for that than um, the phrase brighten my northern sky in fact uh, the title brighter later um, refers to um, a phrase used in the weather forecast unfortunately um, this forecast didn't hold true for nick drake himself who as i mentioned before a few years after died uh, from an overdose of uh, medication against his depression. To this day, it's not really clear if this was maybe intentional or just a very, very sad accident. Uh, not unlike, for instance, Keith Moon, who died of an overdose um, of the medication prescribed to him against uh, his alcohol addiction. Unfortunately, rock history seems to be filled with uh, such cases. But back to the music. We are almost through. The final track uh, on Brighter Later is called Sunday. It's a nice, uh, pleasant acoustic ending, um, a peaceful ending to this uh, really, uh, as I would argue, overlooked and uh, really, really beautiful 
album. Nick Drake's Brighter Later, an album that you can, uh, if you don't look, uh, if you don't listen too closely, you can easily put on for a nice, um, yeah, Sunday morning breakfast or, um, as mentioned before, um, a lush background music uh, for a summer night. It might also be an album that with its beautiful music combined with the rather sad and sometimes um, really depressed lyrics might actually help you to um, get through those dark faces uh, that uh, you might have in, in your life. It's, it's a very um, peaceful and comforting album. To my ears, I know a lot of people uh, listen to this kind of music and say, "Oh no, this is this is really just this is just sad and it's depressing." Um, I um, I'm a fan of the idea of uh, a certain beauty uh, in sadness, and that this can be um, an artistic statement and aesthetic that doesn't necessarily uh, have to uh, bring you down, but uh, can be, as I said before, can actually be comforting. This is one of my uh, few vinyl uh, records in my collection, by the way. Um, I sometimes I show these records in my videos, sometimes I don't, uh, because I don't have all the albums I talk about uh, on vinyl. However, I also I never claimed to be one of those vinyl community channels. Uh, I have a lot of CDs and also a lot of albums these days in simply in, in digital format. Still, uh, I wish I had more vinyl and more space for vinyl collections. Um, um, still, I recommend get uh, get your music, if possible, on vinyl. It's still the, the most beautiful and, um, for no apparent reason, the most authentic way to um, enjoy music. But that is just um, a side note uh, here. So, um, yeah, if you haven't heard of Nick Drake, uh, I don't know if uh, this description, this video uh, made you curious and uh, now rush out and uh, get this album. If you've heard of Nick Drake, uh, you probably know this album. You might uh, cherish, is, cherish it as much as I do. Uh, maybe you are also of the opinion that this is uh, the weakest of the three. Um, then I urge you to re-listen to it. Uh, maybe it will change um, your view uh, on of this album. With that being said, uh, thanks for listening to all my drivel and uh, most of all listen into this one and um, see you maybe in another video. Bye.